Hi, I've just installed Windows on my modern Acer Aspire laptop, and now I'm a broken <coughs> shell of a man. This channel is mostly Apple stuff, as you know, so it is a bit of a change to do a video on Windows, but bear with me as I take you through the harrowing story that was installing an operating system, something that shouldn't really be that hard. As part of my ongoing disdain for Windows, I've been thinking about making a video like this for a while, but now I've got an excuse. So why was getting Windows onto a modern device so bloody difficult? This laptop has the Intel Rapid Storage slash VMD or whatever the heck they're calling it. I'm well aware of what it is and the effects it can have on Windows installations. Another thing I'd like to mention is that I do legally own a copy of Windows 11. Keep that in mind. So let's start at the beginning. The first step was to go onto the Microsoft website and download the official Windows 11 ISO, build number 22H2, and create a bootable USB with the program Rufus on my working Windows 11 PC. The Acer laptop successfully booted from the USB, and I got to the point in the installation where Windows asked for the drivers as it can't find the storage device. So I downloaded the IRST slash VMD drivers and saved it on a USB stick, plugged it in, navigated to those, and it shows up, but Windows says that there are no new storage devices to be found. At first I think, ah, oh, weird fluke, and I'll reboot the thing. Got back into the Windows installer, same thing. And instead of locating the drivers, I do a Shift F10 to access the command prompt. Go into disk part, list disk, and sure enough, as the installer reported, only the install USB can be seen. So I go back to the GUI and select the drivers for install. I shift F10 again, get into command prompt, disk part, list disk, and what do you know? The internal SSD now appears, suggesting that the drivers did actually load. So I go through and manually clean the disk. I make a primary and EFI partition accordingly, and assign letter W to the primary partition. I even go further and I CD into the W drive, I make a test directory and then list the directory and it shows that I can definitely access the SSD and manipulate files on there. Surely if I now go back to the installer I can install the bloody operating system. Nope, it asks for the drivers again and when I provide them it says that nothing can be found. At this point I thought, ah, oh, okay, it's the driver's fault. And I went on a hunt and I downloaded four or five different variations of these drivers from different sources. The Acer website, the Intel website, some Reddit post that linked to a Google Drive. None of them worked and they all provided the same result. I even went as far as going into command prompt and copying the drivers onto the W drive that I had just created so that I could spitefully point the Windows installer to the drivers on the drive it says it can't see. And I did that with success. At this point I'm looking for all options and on a whim I looked up the BIOS update change log for this laptop and the 1.30 update says something about Windows SV2 support. I Google SV2, it means Sunny Valley. <laughs> which is apparently a code name for Windows Build 22H2. My BIOS version is 1.28, so does that mean I just can't install this build of Windows unless I update the BIOS? So I decide to explore this rabbit hole and I download the BIOS updater for 1.30 and it's an EXE file. This laptop has no way to flash the BIOS with an EXE file without a Windows operating system installed. So I thought I could be cheeky and use the Windows install environment. I copied the EXE file to a USB drive, copied it from the USB speed to the W drive that, again, the installer says it can't see, and I launched the program with command prompt now located on the internal SSD. The tool actually opens with a GUI. No error is displayed, but it hangs and doesn't do anything. From the four hours of troubleshooting and extensive Googling, I can only infer that the 22H2 build of Windows cannot be installed on this machine at this point. Okay, no worries, let's go and download an old ISO then. Oh wait! Microsoft has pulled all old ISOs, and it is now impossible to download an old build officially. So even when you legally own the Windows operating system, you still can't do the right thing. You're forced to go and obtain Windows illegitimately, risking security, risking legal ramifications, just because this ecosystem is so f***ing poor. 
So now I'm left downloading an 8 year old Windows 10 ISO. If only I had known those 4 hours ago that all I had to do was go and download an illegal copy of Windows, an 8 year old copy of Windows at that, that it would be fine. How stupid of me. After making a bootable USB, Windows 10 installed onto the laptop without any issues at all, first time. And then I had to sit through the arduous process of having Windows Update run and bringing it up to some sort of modernity. I also updated the BIOS to 1.30 with that EXE tool under Windows 10 just for that peace of mind because am I then to draw the conclusion that if Windows decides to update to 22H2 on a whim one night, Will it just brick the device because the BIOS doesn't have support for it? Can that even happen? I don't know. I didn't want to risk it. Previously I had Linux Mint installed on this machine and I would have kept it, but a lot of the apps and games that my partner and I want to use on there just don't work well under Linux at all. I reckon this whole process just shows you how disjointed and disorganised the whole ecosystem is. Every time you look for help and you dare to click on a Microsoft website, those generic Windows support people pop up and they give you textbook regurgitated generic information. And as much as I tried, I cannot find anyone else talking about this kind of thing. I thought I was going crazy the entire time. If I had phoned up Acer support or spoken to someone at Microsoft, I'm near 100% sure that I wouldn't have got any help at all. Why is it that the end user has to sit through all this troubleshooting and resort to illegally obtaining a copy of Windows just to use the product that they legally own? It is frankly a disgrace that it came to that. So that's the end. I have many more Windows hate tales for you if you're interested. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'll leave it there for now. Thank you very much for watching and have a good one. See ya.